Right, the splice is done. I've taken the clamps off it. The um, alignment's not quite spot on. I should have pushed that edge over a little bit more. Something I didn't really mention before is the middle's not in the middle. But that gives me the choice of how I want to lay out the bow a bit. If I measure it, we've got about three foot to the centre of the splice which means I can have a six foot bow there's six foot and keep the splice dead central or can make it a bit longer and have the bulk of the splice in the grip because of course the grip is slightly below centre well if you've got four inch grip three inches of it are below the centre and one inch is above anyhow it just gives me a, a few little options it's not the prettiest splice because of you know the shape of the billets you can see the sideways profile or if I rotate that way you can see we can also see a cat um, it's relatively straight you've got a nice little reflex tip there which is, is quite cute I think but if I lie it with that edge on the floor I can get one finger underneath it so there's a sort of hint of deflex but it's mostly caused by that and it's a little bit of dip just here but we'll be taking off some of that I think uh, but what you've got is this slight dip here so I can flatten that off and actually use that I can fill over the top of that with a, a slat of U sapwood which will get rid of this discontinuity and also strengthen up strengthen up the back because it, it's the back it's the back of a bow that is what's going to make it explode. If you've got a problem on the back, it can break. If you've got a good continuous solid back, you could, the belly can be made. You could make the belly of a bow up of blocks of wood that aren't even glued together if you wanted. In fact, that's a silly little project I keep meaning to do one day just for the fun of it. Anyhow, I'll probably do a bit of work. I might just clean that up a bit and let you see what it looks like cleaned up. Right, there you go. I've just scooped that out with a spoke shave. I mean, I might have to go further to get rid of this discontinuity. Just, just down there, that discontinuity there. Uh, but you've got to bear in mind, there's rather a lot of sapwood anyway. So I may be reducing the sapwood on the whole bow. Although there again, some of it's weird stuff here anyway. What I'll probably do is try and keep that bit of heartwood and reduce the sapwood. We'll see. That gives an idea. By taking out that scoop, I can fill in with a nice bit of sapwood like that. That will make that stronger. So there we are. It gives you an idea. You can see, although there are all those gaps and what have you, once it was squeezed up, I didn't go mad with the G-clamp pressure. We can see it's actually quite a nice splice. I'll just I'll just clean up this face as well so you can have a look and see what it looks like that side. Uh, I'll take this silly lump off the side there. Let you have a shifty at that then we'll call it done. Right that's the belly side of it cleaned up quickly with the farrier's rasp just so you can sort of see. It's actually it's surprisingly good and embarrassingly good, don't you know? So there you go. And that scoop's a bit weird, but um, because of this effect, I mean, I might have to try and sort of patch, patch, clean that bark off, patch in some sort of wedge there, clean up the scoop, then put this back, back patch on. But um, and that can just sit there as a stave for me to play with when I next get totally bored. I'm not going to finish it now. For those of you who don't know what a farrier's rasp looks like, gives you an idea of the size of it. My span is 10 inches. Two more inches and my hand would be a foot. So you've got this really coarse side there that roughs out quickly. And a finer side there. And if you happen to have a horse, you know, um, comes in handy. 
Right, that'll do. Bye bye, boys and girls.